Welcome back to the Mole and Stoichiometry. We are now on part five, and we're going to talk about empirical formulas and molecular formulas. Let's go! So first, empirical formulas. It's a chemical formula that provides the relative number of each atom in a molecule, so the simplest ratio or the smallest whole number ratio. So for example, in water, there are two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom, so the empirical formula is H2O. This can also refer to the smallest mole ratio, so there's two moles hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. So this formula can mean two atoms hydrogen for every one atom oxygen, or two moles hydrogen for every one mole oxygen. In glucose, which is a type of sugar, for every one carbon atom, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So the empirical formula for glucose is CH2O. Let's contrast that with a molecular formula. It's a chemical for formula that provides the actual number of each atom in a molecule. So in one molecule of water, there are actually two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, or two moles hydrogen and one mole oxygen. So the molecular formula for water is also H2O. In this case, empirical and molecular are the same thing. In glucose, that sugar we were talking about, there are six carbons for every 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. So the molecular formula, or the actual molecule, is C6H12O6. So let's try a problem or so, so we can figure out how to find empirical and molecular formulas. So this question says, determine the empirical formula of a compound that contains 85.63% carbon and 14.37% hydrogen. Now remember when we were talking about percents, those are usually percents by mass. If it's not going to be by mass, it would have to be specified that it was not by mass. But a formula is the ratio of moles, not the ratio of mass. So we're actually going to have to convert these masses into moles. And I know they don't look like masses, but 85.63%, if you had an entire sample that weighed 100 grams, 85.63 grams of that would be carbon. If you had an entire sample that weighed 100 grams, 14.37 grams of that would be hydrogen. So those percents can really be masses if you have a 100 gram sample. So we really want moles because a formula is a mole ratio. So I'm going to change the grams to moles. And so carbon has a mass of 12 grams per mole. And hydrogen has a mass of 1 gram per mole, not 2. I'm not looking for how many H2s are in the molecule, but how many individual Hs are in the molecule. So 85.63 divided by 12 gives me 7.136 moles. And 14.37 times 1 over 1 is 14.37 moles. So now my chemical formula should actually look like C7.136H14.37, which is a little silly because chemical formulas can't have decimal numbers like that. So I'm going to try to get these to be the simplest whole number ratio that I can. And I'm going to do that by dividing them both by the same number. If I divide them both by the smaller of the two numbers, then the smallest number will automatically be 1, and the other one will hopefully, fingers crossed, be a whole number multiple of 1, and in this case, 2, which tells me that the ratio of carbons to hydrogens in this formula is 1 carbon for every 2 hydrogens, and the empirical formula is CH2. If the gram molar mass is 42 grams, the total mass of the whole compound is 42 grams, Let's find the molecular formula. So remember the empirical formula is one carbon for every two hydrogens, or CH2. And that has a molar mass of 14 grams. But if the entire formula is supposed to have a mass of 42 grams, how many 14s go into 42? And if you do 42 divided by 14, you end up with 3, which means in order to get from my empirical formula to my molecular formula, I'm going to have to multiply it by 3. So that would be three carbons instead of one, and six hydrogens instead of two. That's my molecular formula. All right, one more problem. Determine the empirical formula for a compound that contains 140 grams of iron and 60 grams of oxygen. 
In this case, I don't have to assume a 100 gram sample because I'm automatically given grams. So I've got 140 grams of iron, that's Fe, and 60 grams of oxygen, that's O, not O2, because we're not looking at how many O2s are in the molecule, but how many individual oxygens. Off the periodic table, iron has a mass of 55.8 grams per mole, and oxygen has a mass of 16 grams per mole. And when I divide those, I get 2.51 for the iron and 3.75 for the oxygen. Now, I want the simplest whole number ratio, so I'm going to end up dividing both of those by the smaller number, and hopefully I'll get whole numbers for both of them. The smaller one's going to be 1, obviously. The larger number, in this case, actually ends up being 1.5 which is a problem because now my formula is Fe1 O1.5 and I cannot have a decimal number in my formula. So as long as I keep the ratio the same I can do anything I want. So I'm going to actually multiply them both by a number and in this case 2 because if I multiply 1.5 times 2 I'll get 3 and to keep the ratio the same 1 times 2 is equal to 2 so I end up having Fe2 3 as my empirical formula. And that's empirical and molecular formulas. We'll see you next time.